Hello, good morning, and welcome to Ag Talking to Raw. I just had to drink a cup of coffee because, let me tell you something, my ass is dragging. I've been up since about 4 o'clock this morning, took a load of hay, came back, did some maintenance work, loaded another load, strapped it down, did all that crazy stuff that I'm normally doing. Plus, I'm dealing with an idiot, an idiot, yes, that has pulled that phone number off of that box that my M&W turbocharger parts came in. And has decided to threaten my, my life. So I have to go to the state police with that one because he's a fucking idiot. And he put his regular telephone number there. And he's going to get a phone call from his local police department. Whether it's a, uh, it's a 619 number. Jackass. Anyway, with that being said, we'll just move on to the next thing. Last week, I talked about the milk price. Just yesterday, I bought a gallon of milk for $1.49 at the Aldi supermarket. Wow. I mean, really, wow, that's pretty freaking cheap. Um, milk has been as high as $4 here. I, I don't know because I don't buy milk anymore. Uh, the reason I don't buy milk is because I just can't stand the taste of it. it. It's not like it was when I was a kid and you just walked over to the bulk tank, lifted the lid, scooped it out, drank a few cups, and boom, off you went. It was nice and cold and tasted really good. Um, ah, let's see. Da -da -da. At... I would, yeah, Wesley, this is the wandering man. I was at the DFA meeting and they said there is too much milk on the market and 2018 will be a bloodbath of low milk prices for the dairy farmers. Well, I'm sorry to hear that because it is pretty ridiculous. Um, dairy farmers work really hard you know I mean I was a dairyman I know you're up at you're up at 4 30 in the morning you're milking those cows you know and there's down cows there's frozen water pipes there's just heifers that don't go where they belong you gotta it's it's a pain in the ass and believe me I gotta Wayne Taylor has been uh, messaging me so I need to speak with him so I probably will call him he's got coal I could get him to deliver coal up to me I think so, um, da -da -da -da. what about people? What about people who try to make up your mind for you? Nobody makes up my mind. They just don't. Uh, they, it doesn't happen. Um, I don't mind the pounding on the desk. Desk. I think that was the guy that said stop pounding on the desk, but it's okay. I don't. I don't mind. All right. Uh, Elm Custom Harvesting actually posted on here. It says, thanks for the video. I find it interesting listening to you answer questions. I have a question. Why would anybody in their right mind want to farm? I kind of agree with that, you know, um, but let me finish this sentence or his question. Seems like you have to be in everything to make it go. With grain prices low, beef prices low, but yet tobacco prices giving me hope for another year. Hope you have a great day farming is, yeah, hope you have a great day. Farming is a lifestyle, not a job. The farmer. Okay, so, yeah, why would anybody in their right mind want to go, want to be a farmer? 90% uh, of us, you know, I'd have to say 90% of us. Uh, don't quote me on these numbers because I'm not 100% certain of that, but not a lot of us really truly were born into it and we know nothing else and not that we can't do something else it's just a lot of guys will venture out into the world and try to do something else whether it be drive a truck or even go to college and get a job in the city but they generally come back to the farm eventually and take up the reins at some point whether it's when mom and dad are too old and tired to carry on or you know, in, don't quote me on this stuff, but it is kind of in our blood. Now, Elm Custom Harvesting, he he's a first-generation farmer, which is a very difficult thing to do. And in his defense, you know, he, he does get defensive. Uh, don't get me wrong. I don't watch his stuff. Not much. I mean, once in a while, I'll pop in, you know, take a look at a video. I don't subscribe to him. I'm sure he would love me to be a subscriber of his, but I am not. Um, not that I, you know... His style of stuff is different but it, than mine, and it's fine, but, you know, we're okay. Um, but, you know, I kind of get where he's coming from, that he's scratched a living out of agriculture from the dirt. Um, I think some of his stuff is a little bit, you know, you wonder, but it's okay because he's watching, and we kind of understand each other now a little bit better than we did before. But, yeah, why would you want to go into milking cows? We know that the price of milk is just going to continue to fall. Or stay where it is, which is the worst thing. 
I mean, it stays where it is. It never comes up and the price is electric is more, diesel fuel is more, tractors are more, shit spreader. I used to buy a shit spreader for $1,500. You try to buy one for under 9000 bucks now, and I'm talking a 220 bushel, you know, rear slinger shit spreader, box shit spreader, something that new idea invented back 50,000 years ago. You know, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it is a difficult thing. Beef cows. You know, unless you're running Black Angus, you're getting the shit kicked out of you on price, too. Uh, and kudos, my hat's off to the Black Angus guys, you know, the Black Angus beef people that have pushed the Black Angus as being the best beef in the world. Well, you cut that skin off, the meat is just as red on a Black Angus as it is on, a, say, a Charolais or Hereford or Semmental. It doesn't matter, They're, you know, or even an old Holstein. You know, you raise up a Holstein with the right diet and you'll get nice marbled meat, too. Um, but, you know what, Black Angus guys, they're, they did a good job. So, enough of that one. Um, there's a guy that asked me a question on corn and he, he's like, you know, I love corn. He says, I would eat corn all the time. He says, but when I buy that Chinese food and, and there's these little ears of corn that are say that big and are just tiny little pinky sized little bits of corn. He says, is that the same kind of corn that you grow? Well, I don't grow corn anymore. At least not this year. 2018 might bring some corn back into my, into my nut job kind of mentality that's going on here but uh yes look the, the answer to that question is yes that corn is just it's probably a certain type of variety and that they just harvest it when it's when the little ears have only formed that far so if you if you're driving by a cornfield um and you want to find out for yourself i'm sure you could stop and ask the farmer say hey uh can i pull that ear off you know generally right after it tassels Maybe within a week or so after it tossles, you can go pull one of those ears off and open her up and you're going to see that very same or very similar looking ear of corn. It's probably a certain variety that they use. So hopefully that question answers your question. Okay, so last week uh, or last Wednesday I said the 8430, 8630 were the same tractor except they just turned the screw up, which I was promptly corrected. And I did know this, I had just forgotten about it, but they did run the 619 in the larger of the two tractors. But the rest of the tractor is, by far, it is the same. Uh, 8530 and 80, or 8430 and 8630 articulated tractors did still have the same rears in them. And I believe those are the rears out of, say, the 5010 and 5020. Um, I'm pretty sure they are because they were very, very heavy, at least that genre of rear ends. And what they would do with the uh, front drive is they would just flip it over and run it in that way. At least, I haven't been too close to an 8630, but I have been to an 8430. And yeah, they are, they are definitely, you know, they have different engines in them. The 619 motor was a bit of a problem child. If you overheated them, they would actually crack the blocks. So, you know. But they were a board out uh, 531. Oh, let's see. The problem with arguing with stupid people is they bring you down to their level and beat you with experience. Well, that ain't the truth now, is If that ain't the truth, I don't know what is. Um, <laughs> great discussion, Wes. No Teletubbies, please. Well, we'll kind of try not to, but I might just have to. You know how that goes. Um, this guy, Harold Zavak. Zavakos uh, asked how my Lyme disease is going. Well, Lyme disease is a pain in the ass. Uh, it draws your energy, makes you sore and achy and tired, and you know. So I'm I'm struggling, but I'll be all right. I'll get over it. It'll be fine. I'm pretty pretty resilient to this sorts of things. Great channel, Wes. Here recently, your OLF channel has not been coming up on my notifications. Kind of frustrating, not knowing when YouTube. Don't notify me that you uploaded a new video. Well, that does happen. And I actually went into the guidelines to find out why. Um, if you have a uh, an account and you're not using it, which kind of surprises me because anybody that's watching my videos is technically using their account, YouTube will actually reclaim the account name. And I think that's what's happening. Um, is it right? I don't know. I don't think it is, but whatever. All right, so start to 5020. Yeah, 5020 does start and run. It does. Um, hey, Wes, it's Joe, the key man. I just wanted to ask if you are planning on getting the old cat 
955 L loader fixed up and ready to go soon. No, there's no plans for that to be fixed up right now. Um. <laughs> Wes, you're killing me here. Are you keeping the 4960 or not? Yes, I am keeping the 4960. The 4960, I'm going to split it apart. I'm going to take out that first planetary pack, which is in the first part of that transmission there, and I'm going to chuck it in the trash and buy a new one. For $2,500, um, Tractor Parts ASAP has a reconditioned one. Actually, I'm not going to chuck it in the trash. I'm going to ship it back to them, and they're going to rebuild it. And that'll be the end of that. Or I'll rebuild it myself. It's nothing but clutch plates and pressure plates. It's fine. It's easy. Um, can you explain how the mushroom barn breaks down the hay and use and usage for it? Okay, so when you uh, take a bale of hay or a load of hay into the mushroom barn, they cut the strings off of it. They push it up into a pile uh, with coarse manure, uh, poultry manure, uh, straw. Um, some use corn fodder or soybean fodder, which is kind of normal nowadays. Uh, they'll put cocoa hulls. They'll put cotton seed hulls in with it. They will put gypsum in with it, and then they start to turn it. And they add water, lots and lots and lots of water. So once it gets all mixed together and it's damp, it's wet or whatever, they push it up into a long row. And then they, that's called a turner. And then there's another machine that is called a rick a rick machine. So that rick, I, I'm, I'm calling it a rick machine because I don't actually know the proper term for that machine. And this is getting darker. Why is it doing that, damn it? Um, so that machine takes the turn piles and puts them into a rick or a row, which is an 8x8 eight by, eight, uh, by several hundred feet long. And then they'll stick thermometers into it and monitor the compost part of it. And then they'll run it through the, the machine that turns the rick or the turner again, and that adds more water. If the temperature gets too high, they gotta add water. If it gets too low, they gotta let it set. I don't know, there's there's a whole process. And then after it's done, then it gets, you know, put into the mushroom barns. There are, di there are many different uh, ways of doing this. Uh, the mushroom barn that I normally deal with, they are not doing it that way anymore. They have what you call a bunk system, and they're using that, so. Okay, so last week I said something about farm labor and how I'm not going to be hiring farm people to run equipment. And uh, this guy, Richard Green, says, The problem with farm labor is the same problem faced in all small business today. Not young people. No young people are willing to show up. They always have a problem. We only have one employee that is under 50, and he'll go back on from re he'll get back from rehab Hell of a good kid and good worker, but just can't stay away from the shit. Well, that is a problem. Drug dependency is pushed on TV every freaking day. Every day. You go home and you get on a computer. What's the advertisement for? What ails you? You got this, we'll take that. And when that gives you a problem, you can take this, this, and this. And the next thing, you're addicted. Because somewhere along the way, there's a, there's a narcotic or an opiate. And uh, then what? You're addicted. So now, and then they, then they say, oh, it's not an addiction, it's a disease. Well, drug and alcohol is not a disease. It is a choice. It is a choice. And once you become addicted and dependent, that's still not a disease. It's not a choice. It's an addiction or a dependency. And you need to get your head cleared up, go down to rehab, get off the shit, get going on your life and quit worrying about dope and alcohol and be normal, productive human beings instead of claiming it's a disease because once it's a disease, then you can go on to disability and suck off the tits of hardworking people just like me and probably a lot of my other viewers on here. So if you come on here and tell me, oh, well, I'm in, I got a disease, it's called alcoholism. Well, Jesus fucking Christ, when you open up that bottle of Jim Beam, it doesn't say, may cause a disease. It says, if you have a problem with alcoholism, uh, you know, contact whatever. It doesn't even do that. It says, don't drink this irresponsibly if you're pregnant or underage. That's it. It doesn't say, hey, drink this and you're going to get a disease like AIDS. You know, maybe if it did, people wouldn't drink it. You know, but whatever. I got a whole, <laughs> I got a whole rant on that shit. Okay, so Bone Farm needs my TR70 combine. There's just broke down. Scrap price, guys. That's all it's gonna take is scrap price. 
60 cents a pound. The combine weighs, what, seven, eight tons? We're looking at 16,000 pounds. Um, that ain't 16,000 pounds. Yeah, 16,000 pounds. Six cents a pound. It ain't much. It's like uh, $6 a hundred. No, 60 cents a hundred maybe. I don't know. It's ridiculous. Give me, give me $500 for the header and for $500 for the combine and $250 for the header. You got yourself a combine. Just come out and get it. I'll put air in the tires for you and help you load it. You know, that's it. That's all it's going to take. Ah, hey, Wes, can you talk about the first baler, the New Holland 2000 that I had and what I pulled it with and how I came to have it? Okay, way back in, hold on a second, I got to darken you out a bit. Um, way back in 1997, I had pretty much decided that I was tired of fighting the deer, growing corn and soybeans, and the hay market was great because mushroom barns were just getting bigger and bigger all the time and it was steady income they set the price and it was that same price all year long so if you made 10,000 tons of hay you knew what you were going to excuse me what you were going to get and back then it was $60 a ton but diesel fuel was only a dollar you know 72 cents for farm fuel and a dollar 10 maybe for road fuel it was crazy cheap fertilizer was $90 a ton for 46 percent urea um, and uh, everything else was really cheap so uh, that's that's why I wanted to go into it I flew all the way across the country to a place called uh, Ontario Ag in Ontario Oregon and Oregon Oregon and uh, I purchased it and it showed up in February of 1998. 1998 was the first year I made mulch hay for the mushroom industry. So, yes, the New Holland 2000 was a great entry-level baler. It wasn't anything that I would attempt to use today because I would just go nuts. I'd get nothing done. I mean, a good year was 2,500 bales, and I mean, you worked hard as hell to get 2,500 bales a year through that thing. So, yeah. Um, here's this guy, Tom Jerabed. Garabed? Wes, did I see you on your tractor going down Route 57 in Mansfield today? About 12, 14 at 3 p.m.? Yes, yes, you did. That was me. I was way the hell up there. It's about 35 miles away. Um, let's see. What's this guy saying? Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. You need a link to my website? It's oneonlyfarmer.com. There it is. That's simple. Case, C-A-S-E, can't afford something else. I've had really good luck with that Case wind grower, so I can't knock that at all. Um, my shirt's Teletubby Pink. What's the story on the buffalo? Well, the buffalo was bought by my Aunt Beth 19, in 1971. Her, my grandparents, and my, my other aunts, my two aunts and my grandparents went on a Midwestern tour all the way through, all the way, I think they went all the way to California and back down through the Southwest. And uh, she saw buffaloes there in Yellowstone, which was up in Wyoming, I believe. Um, yeah, so she was in Yellowstone. They saw buffaloes and stuff there and then down through the Southwest and went to Nevada and all over the, all over the place. There's eight millimeter camera footage of that, which I would love to get my hands on. I should have an eight millimeter projector here and a rebuild kit here someplace for that thing. Um, but yeah, I'm going to rebuild it and then I'm going to run those and try to get them up online because there's some really cool farming footage on there. Um, so she saw buffaloes out there and always wanted buffaloes and buffalo anything. If it has a buffalo on it, she'll buy it. So she decided, well, I got everything buffalo, so I might as well buy a buffalo. And she did. All right. Hey, Wes, I like your channel and I want to start a hobby farm because... I, my dad, is diabetic and has a reaction to GMO foods. And I was wondering if you could do a machine tour. Yeah, I could probably do a machine tour. It'd take a long time, but I, I could do it. Uh, I'm trying to get this done. Do I miss grain farming? Yes. Yeah, at least my shirt matched my ears. That was last last Wednesdays. Um, da -da -da. Wow. Okay, here's one, and I'm going to read it. It's a long one. Um, 
but you're going to have to bear with me because this is my channel, and if you don't like it, you can always click off. Okay, this is going to be a little long-winded, but my apologies. Until an auto accident in 2001 left me a quadriplegic. I can move my arms and drive and such. That's not quadra, that's para. But quadra would be all four limbs. So you're able to drive. Um, I'm sure you can you can move your arms. So you're paraplegic. Um, unless I'm mistaken. I'm sorry, I'm not going to try to dis, you know, di, you know, uh, 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 make fun of your, your inabilities. He said, I worked the majority of my life in agriculture and construction. Since my injury, I have wanted to get back in, in the seat. My question is, with the transmissions in a lot of today's tractors not needing a clutch and devices on the market to physically lift people into equipment, would you ever consider converting a tractor or, hell, even a swather to allow the opportunity for someone who is little less than able-bodied to feel the freedom of tractor cab in the field again? I am not even speaking for myself, as we live too far apart, LOL. But for some, like me, I'd be willing to bet my left nut that there are plenty of disabled farmers of all ages that would love the opportunity. Thanks for your time, Don L. Well, Don, yes, um, you don't need a clutch in the uh, in the uh, new tractors like the 80, 8530. You can pull that stick all the way back to the to the not neutral position. But you can pull it all the way back and throw it into park, and it'll stop, and it won't do any damage to the transmission. You, but everything has you can run that thing completely with your two hands. Steering wheel, all your controls are right here like this. Your fingers, all your hydraulics and stuff, and you don't need your feet at all. Really, honestly, you don't. Uh, the IVT transmissions work really good. The wind rower, both of them, steering wheel and stick, everything is here. So if you've got limited movement in say your right arm it might be a little more difficult but I'm sure we could figure something out and if you really wanted to get into a tractor seat and run for an afternoon there's two seats in that thing and I would be more than willing to sit next to you while you drove that thing around the field whether you're working or not you know if you want to feel the feel what it's like to be back in a tractor seat I'll lift you up I'll get you in there and uh, we'll figure something out you know and yeah I would definitely be interested in that you know, it'd be kind of cool to make a video, you know, hey, not to, not to, you know, to make fun of your disability, but to show that people that can't walk and can't do normal stuff can still be functional and still work and still have value in, in agriculture. There's plenty of guys that are in agriculture that are missing limbs and still get up every day and go to work and do their thing. You know, I had a, a friend, and this is the last thing I'm going to say here because we're getting long-winded too. Um... And a friend of mine went to high school with, or grade school with him. He got to high school. He spent one day, freshman year, one day. He says, fuck it, I'm out of here. He walks out of school and he goes to work. Gets into the working field, worked on a farm. Uh, that farmer sold his farm, moved to New York State. He didn't want to go with him, so he stayed here. Ended up working in a quarry. And then when my ex-wife left me, uh, he comes to me and says, hey, uh, do you think you can give me a job? I don't like my job, but I, can work. I love to work on a farm. Will you help me out? I'm like, yeah, sure. You can come work for me. And, you know, he did. He worked for me for a while, and uh, uh, some things happened, and it just wasn't working out, so I let him go. And, uh, you know, we didn't part not friends. We just parted ways because, A, work had died off, and the agreement that we had, he wasn't holding up his end of the bargain. But he decided he would go on disability, and this disability was a lazy eye. He applied for disability for having lazy eye and got full disability for having lazy eye. And honestly, that was just wrong. Fast forward a couple of years, he has a major heart attack. Now he's truly disabled and he is on disability. Uh, so smoking, multiple different types of products uh, didn't help his heart any, but he did end up, he, he is on disability. He wears a bag, not a bag, but a bag defibrillator. So if his heart stops, it goes, and he sees blue for a little while and he's back in business. But, uh, you know, disabled people can work. Really, I know a lot of disabled people that can work. Um, but then there's the people that think they're disabled that have no desire to work. And that I call heart and ass disease. That means they don't have the heart to get off their ass. So Don, if you want to come out to the farm and you want to run a tractor 
any tractor you want to run that is capable of dealing with hand controls, I will sit with you personally and we'll see to it that you get a day's worth of work or more if you want. You know, just plan the trip. I'll get you in the cab and we'll go from there. Anyways, for that, I'm closing out. Thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll see you on Wednesday.